Doesn't it feel good to be invited to something? Like it's just something that like we have in common, humanity has in common. Like it feels good to be invited, uh, whether that's to a wedding, a birthday party, or just like a friend, right? And gives you a call, hey, let's go for coffee or something. But just that moment when somebody else looks at you and says, hey, I want you to be with me, it just warms the heart, right? Like there's something about invitation that is just so good. And, and, and when I think about invitation, honestly, just this week, I was actually away most of the week and um, at, a, at a conference and just kind of thinking about this message today. And I, I, was, I was drawn back to five years ago when Pastor Mark Hazard left. Uh, five years ago, Pastor Mark Hazard, if you don't, you're not aware who that is, he led this church for 22 years faithfully. And when, when he resigned as lead pastor, uh, I got to be honest, for Natalie and I, it was just a season of chaos. Like, I mean, just all out chaos. What we found out pretty quick was that everybody had an opinion on what was best for this church. Everybody seemed to have an opinion on me. <laughs> you know, like it was a really disorienting time. And it was really a time of just us praying through, God, what do you want for us? Do we stay? Do we go? Like, what's, what's your plan here? And so Natalie and I, we just kind of entered into a season of prayer, like really asking God to speak to us. And it was through that time uh, that really I felt uh, God through the Holy Spirit just speak to my heart. And he didn't say, um, Danny, you will be the next pastor of Parkwood. <laughs> that didn't happen. That didn't happen. But what I did feel that God put on my heart was, Danny, I want you to walk through the open doors until they close. Now, that was interesting because at that time, there was no open door. Like, no open door. But then within about a week uh, after that, there was just this moment where the search committee uh, called me up and said, hey, Danny, we'd, we'd love for you and Natalie to come in. We, we, we want to hear your heart. This door opened. So we walked through that door. We shared our heart. From there, we were invited to meet with the board of deacons share our heart and maybe potential vision for this church there. And then, and, and then from there, another door opened as I was invited I had to come and, and really come before the members of this church. And, and, and really, it was the members of this church that invited me to be uh, the pastor when they voted me in. But, but here's the thing that I want to that, that I want to lay before you. I'm not here today because of a search committee, because of a board, or because of the members of this church. I'm here because before any of that started, I, I heard the, the Holy Spirit speak to my heart and say, Danny, walk through the open doors until they close. Now, at some point, Parkwood, they're going to close. Like, I'm going to die, Jesus is going to return, or he's going to call me out of here. But until one of those things happen, I'm here because of the invitation of God. Parkwood, I, I, I just need to lay this before you before we, 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 we talk this morning. Our God is a God of invitation. Like he's never going to force his way on us. Like, like really, God didn't need Danny Gray to be standing here right now. He didn't. But he invited me in. It was, it was my choice with whether or not I was going to follow. Like, like God's not going to force his way on us, but what he seems to do is he opens up doors. He opens up doors, and there's this invitation to come, to trust, and to follow him. Well, well this morning, what I believe in our time together, I believe God this morning is going to swing open a massive door for our church. And then the question is just going to be, what are we going to do with that invitation? But you ready to go? Okay, let's go. Isaiah chapter 55. Uh, we're going to anchor ourselves in two different verses, but he, he, here's what it says. It says, Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good. I love this. And your soul will delight in the richest affair. 
So that's our text this morning. We're going to spend 90% of our time right in this passage of Scripture, and hopefully we're going to learn some stuff. As we explore these two verses, really what I want to do is uh, ask and, and answer three different questions this morning, and I just believe God is going to move. You ready? Here we go. Question number one. Ready? Who is invited? Right? That's, that's a good question. I mean, you look at this, right? Like, who, who's invited to the party? Well, look at verse 1 again. 55 verse 1, it says this. Come all who are thirsty. The invitation goes out towards the thirsty. Now, let me tell you why this is good news. Uh, Dr. John Piper, as he says it this way, that our, our hearts are thirst factories. Our souls are caverns of desire. Like, is, is, this, is this not true? Like that somewhere deep inside of us, there's this soul craving, this desire for something more. That's also why at times we feel empty. And like we're missing something and like there's more to life than this, right? It's because God has actually created us with these desires and he made us this way on purpose so that he can be the one who fills them. This was his design to fill those longings inside of us. But can we just have a moment of honesty? Although it is true that for most of the people that are listening to my voice right now, there's this acknowledgement that we have these longings inside of us. And it's true that on some level, we want Jesus to be the one who meets those needs. It is also true that sometimes we will drink from anywhere or anything or sometimes anyone that's offering. Like, it's just true. Like, like, like for some of you, and that thirst that you feel, man, just has you running from sexual partner to sexual partner to sexual partner. For others, it has you chasing a new hobby every single month, flopping around from church to church to church to church to church. Maybe it's wardrobes, maybe it's, it's, it's cars, it's houses, it's stuff, right? If we can just, right, you got that feeling inside of you, that, that emptiness, that, that void, and we're like, ah, oh, I gotta fill it with stuff, right? It's true that, yes, on some level, we want Jesus to fill that, but it's also true that sometimes we drink from other wells. That's actually what the prophet said. That, that it's, like, it's like we have the living water offered for us, but yet sometimes we're just drinking from other places. Like, look, look right here, Isaiah 55, verse 2. This is why he writes, Why spend money on what is not bread in your labor on what does not satisfy? Let, let, let me just ask a question this morning. So we've, we, we felt that emptiness. We've gone around. We try to fill it with all this different stuff and all these different people in our lives. And so now that we've done that, can I just ask the question, are you satisfied? Is it working? Like you've, you've got your stuff, but how is your soul? And, and, and really, I, I want to be very clear. I'm, I'm not talking about like external smiles on your face. I'm talking about something much deeper. I'm saying like when it's just you alone at night. When you're driving your car down the highway. When you finally slow down enough to take an honest look at what's in the inside. Are you satisfied or do you find that all that stuff that you've been running after and acquiring, that it numbs you for a moment, but leaves you thirsty in the next? Jesus says right here, come all who are thirsty. Anybody thirsty this morning? Oh, come on. This is how God made us. Come all who are thirsty. Who gets the, who, who's invited? Who gets the invitation? Everybody, all of humanity is invited to this one. But now let's ask the second question, which is simply this. Okay, so that's who's invited. Now let's ask, what are we invited to? Right? Like, this is a big question. And I, I actually think, I was thinking about this this week. 
I think one of the main reasons why the majority of the world outside of the church, let's just speak about Windsor, Essex County, okay, that is not worshiping Jesus this morning. I, I honestly think one of the main reasons why is because they don't understand what's, what, what, what the invitation is. They look in on the church and they see bigotry. They, I'm not saying that's right. This is what they see, right? They, they, they see moralistic uh, rules, right? Like our do's and don'ts list. And, and, and they don't understand what the invitation is. In fact, I would argue that it's possible that there may be a large group in here this morning that doesn't understand what we're invited to. So we know that the invitation goes out towards the thirsty, those who, who have that, that feeling, that desire for something more. But now let's ask this second question. What are we invited to? Let's go back into first one. I love this. Come all who are thirsty. And then I, watch this. Come to the waters. And you who have no money, come by and eat. Come by wine and milk without money and without cost. God in his word here is going to invite us to himself as he likens himself to three different liquids. Three different beverages, if you will. And I, and I just want to walk through this. The, the, the first one is this. He says, come to the waters. Now, water here represents salvation. Water represents cleansing. Water represents this restoration, right? Water. This is what water does. I, I remember years ago uh, when I was a youth, we went to uh, Brayside Camp. Anybody here ever been to Brayside Camp? Like 3% is really excited right now. <laughs> when I was young, we went to youth camp and this, ba back in the day, Brayside Camp had a mud pit for wrestling. Like, like they don't have it anymore and probably for good reason, like insurance probably stepped in and said, you're crazy, get rid of this. But before that, we were involved and, and we'd go to these camps and literally it was like 10 inches of just wet mud and they'd put a bunch of guys in there and we would just body slam each other for like an hour. Like it was amazing. And I, and I remember uh, just being caked in mud all around and then going to the showers. And, and literally as the water hit my body, like mud was coming out of my ears, out of my nose, like it was just everywhere. But it was the waters, right? It was the waters that, that, that came down that, that wasn't just refreshing, man. The water was cleansing, as, 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 as the mud would just fall off my body and I was watching it hit the ground, it was the waters that actually caused this to happen. You need to see it. The first invitation to Jesus this morning is this, come to water. Come and receive the waters of God. Maybe the only way to explain the way that you feel right now is like a 12-year-old Danny Gray after mud wrestling. Okay, like your life, the way you're living your life, the things you've done, said, thought, or things that have been done to you, man, it's just left you feeling dirty. And you don't know, like, what, what do you do with that, right? And, and then there's this invitation, come, come and get clean. Come and, come and be restored. Jesus is water. That's the first in, invitation. Like, is it any wonder? That actually the external sign that you are a follower of Jesus Christ is that you get into the waters and you're baptized, right? Now, now water, the waters of baptism, they, they, they have a couple different um, symbol, symbolisms, but, but one of the main ones is this, that, that the waters in baptism actually symbolize the cleansing that you received when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, right? So we come to the waters to show our devotion to Jesus. In fact, why don't you take a quick look just at this short video? Hello, uh, my name is Chrétien Sampang and I am 21 years old. So I guess where my faith journey began was I was raised Catholic. I'd, I altar served for quite a while, I like uh, 12, 12 years, um, and I always felt the need in my heart just to get closer to God, and I never really got to that point until I ended up meeting my girlfriend, who was Christian, um, 
who exposed me to Christianity and taught me a lot of things and encouraged me to get to church. Um, I was going through a bunch here in Windsor and ended up finding Parkwood. I attended my first service, I guess being a new Christian coming in, I was kind of like skeptical going in. And then I was seeing everyone worship and raising their hands and I'm like, what is this that's, that's going on? It was kind of something that I was curious about and really wanted to dive deeper into. And then I guess I ended up looking back into my life and ended up seeing all the ways that God moved, whether it be getting um, that first job or just passing that test. Just looking back and seeing all the blessings he had in my life really made me decide and reassure myself that this is really what I wanted to do. And then, not too long after, I attended the first New Life uh, Sunday service. Being able to see others get baptized and just seeing the, seeing the Holy Spirit and God move uh, in the church was really, was really eye-opening. And it was really something I knew I wanted to be a part of. I wanted to experience that and I felt like in my heart it was just the right time to do it. So I decided to get baptized because of well, firstly, that service really exposed me to all that, and I knew it was something I really wanted to do, and I really felt like God's God move in my heart. It was something I actually pushed back for a very long time, for I would say a couple months, even after that New Life Sunday um, service. And there were just so many signs in my life where you come to this point where it's time to, you know, kind of like take that next step, um, you know, in my faith journey. I could really feel like his, him coming in with open arms and saying, let's continue this, let's continue this walk in uh, faith. So the baptism experience, I remember walking in and just seeing all the other people who were gonna get baptized with me and just getting to know a few of them as well. It was really encouraging to know that I wasn't alone in this. When my turn came, I, I walked out there and I remember just looking at my family um, and friends on the side there and just seeing how emotional they were. And that was really um, something special. I remember just Pastor Danny just giving me that comfort because I was, I was really nervous at the time. And when I came out of that water, I really felt new again, um, like scripture says. Seeing the church community being united into one body, having the support of the church was really nice to see as well. I've been attending Parkwood for a year, over a year now. I started attending uh, Parkwood uh, Young Adults, and from there I ended up finding a small life group that really changed my life. From the, the slogan, find hope, find home, it ended up becoming my home. One uh, verse that stuck out to me in the Bible was uh, Philippians uh, 4 verses 6 to 7. Just knowing that God's always there by your side. Going to Him and praying to Him was, I didn't realize how needed it was until I ended up getting that peace that exceeded all my expectations and knowledge. My name is Kretien Sampang, and this is my story. And that's one story. <laughs> I've got hundreds, absolutely hundreds. Listen, I just want to say this really quick. If, if you are following Jesus Christ, like you've said yes to following Jesus, but you've never been baptized, I want to just encourage you, or maybe your, your stories, uh, like my friends here, and maybe you were even born and raised in the Catholic Church. You might have been uh, baptized uh, as just a young baby, but you never made that decision for yourself. We just want to invite you uh, to really make that decision for yourself. And quite literally, next week, we're going to come to the waters and we're going to be uh, baptizing people. It's, it's, it's going to be great. But listen, if you want to be baptized uh, next week in our New Life Sunday, the deadline is tonight. Uh, tonight, this, and this is important, tonight at 6 p.m., if you're interested in this, uh, just you don't even need to sign up on a form ahead of time, just tonight be here at 6 p.m. We have a baptism class happening in our cafe right behind that back wall there. And uh, we're going to celebrate next week, but we don't want you to miss this opportunity. That's 6 p.m. tonight. All right, so let's, let's, let's go back into the Isaiah text. Come, all who are thirsty. Come to the water. Right, This is the first invitation, but it's not the only invitation. Uh, the, the second invitation is this. He says, come and buy milk. Now, milk, kind of everywhere, not only in this text, but milk is the strengthening, sustaining substance of life. Right? Just, that is warm. Just gonna chase that down with some of this. 
Ah. <laughs> it's been sitting out for a couple hours. Okay. If I get sick, <laughs> Gary, you got to finish this message. <laughs> That's... Milk is the strengthening, sustaining substance of life. This is why we give our babies milk and not pop. Okay? It's just like parenting advice right there. If you didn't know. Right? We give our babies milk, right? It strengthens us, sustains us, builds us up. And really, that's what's being offered here in this text. Jesus is saying, I don't just want to be water. I don't just want to be the one who, who, who cleanses you. I want to be the one who strengthens you. I, I, I want to be the one who sustains you. But honestly, for some of us, we don't even understand milk. Because our relationship with God has basically been water to mud, water to mud, water to mud. We get dirty. It's like, oh, I I need Jesus. So then we we, we come under the waters, we get clean, then we're just turned right back out to the mud again. Water to mud. That's our relationship with God. That's all that we know about God. But here, there's a different image given, and it's one of milk. The idea of milk is... Is, is, is not this idea of, hey, just come and get cleansed, but God's saying, I, I want to strengthen you. You, you, you want to know what happens in milk? In, in, in the stage of milk, it's actually our appetites begin to change. That's actually what, what, what Jesus is offering this morning, is that the more that we pursue him, the more that our actual appetites will begin to change. You think of that song, right? We used to sing it a lot. Uh, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. In the things of earth, the temptations of earth, in all that stuff of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. You know what that is? That's milk. That's what milk does. Okay, that the more that we drink, the more we pursue, it's not just come and get cleansed, but it's come and get strengthened. Come, come and, and, and let God actually be the one who begins to change our appetite so that we don't keep going back in the mud. That's, the invi- that's part of the invitation. Come and drink water. Be cleansed and then come and get milk. Be strengthened. And that's still not the end of the invitation. There's the third. And somebody right now is pulling out a card to complain. (laughs) Let me just explain. There's no alcohol in this. Just for the one who's going to blast me, this is sparkling juice. But what it'll do, it'll, it'll prove my point, at least for us this morning. Jesus says, come and buy wine. Wine, in this text, is the invitation to life, <laughs> to joy, to, to exhilaration, right? Like, like, did you know that you're actually supposed to be excited about Jesus? Like somebody just needs to hear that this morning, like right there. Like, like, like actually what God wants for your life is not just to cleanse you, he wants to strengthen you and then he wants to dance. You see the picture? Like wine, wine. You think about Jesus on purpose chose that the very first miracle that he ever performed was to turn water into wine at a wedding. Because it's in that moment, what he's doing is he's actually announcing through the miracle who he is. And what's he announcing? That he's the God of the party. That he's the God of life. (laughs) He's the God of joy and exhilaration. But again, man, for some of us, this is like a pipe dream to you. Because we're stuck over here. And we're stuck just, I I need the water, back in the mud. I need the water, back in the mud. This, man, seems like a million miles away. But I want you to see the invitation. (laughs) Come to the waters. Come and be cleansed. And then come and get the milk. 
The milk that's going to strengthen you and sustain you and build those bones and then come and drink of the wine. God is saying, man, I've got so much more for your life than, than, than you even realize. I want to dance with you. I want to celebrate with you. Like, this is our God. Look at the, the way that this uh, passage ends. I, 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 I love it. Where, where is it? i got to find my text again. Right here. Listen, listen to me and eat what is good in your soul will delight in the richest affair. So good. Or I love John 10.10 10, where Jesus says, um, oh, it's so good. Jesus says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But then he says, but I, I've come so that you may have life. Yeah. And not just any ordinary life, he says, and life to the full. Life more abundantly, like this is who our God is. Park would listen, all that I know, all that I know is simply this, that nothing can satisfy you like Jesus can. I want you to hold on to this truth. Nothing can satisfy you like Jesus can. Jesus is better than any passing dream you might be tracing after. He's better than any worldly ambition that may have captured your devotion. He's better than any six-figure salary. He's better than any big home or money or clothes or sex or entertainment or achievement or comfort. He's better. And he's offering something that nothing else in this world can provide. Like everybody else is making this claim. And almost every commercial that we see says if you go on this trip, if you buy this product, bam, life. But, but d- does it actually uh, answer what it gives? Does it actually deliver what it promises? And the answer is no, because we've all bought it. We've all gone to the mall and bought that pair of jeans. We've all gone on that trip. We've all done that thing. And yet at the end of it all, we're still hungry. We're still thirsty. And it's simply because this, nothing can satisfy you like Jesus can. Nothing. And so I want everyone in our church to understand what's actually on the table this morning. It is cleansing power. It is strengthening power. And it is wine. It is celebration. This is what you're invited to but I still have one last question to ask. And maybe it's the most important one, which is just simply this. How do we respond to an invitation like this? Come all who are thirsty. Goes out to everybody. What are we invited to? Jesus as water, Jesus as milk, Jesus as wine. But still the question, okay, so... How do we respond? What, 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 do we, what do we do? And the answer is simple and yet very profound. Are you ready? Drink. We drink. I love that. I'm going to read it again. Verse 2. Listen, listen to me. Eat what is good. And your soul will delight in the richest affair. Parkwood, in the same way that God spoke to me some five years ago and said, Danny, I want you to walk through the doors until they shut. I believe that's the invitation this morning. I believe this morning God has swung open a door. And he's making himself available. He's inviting us, just come to me. Come to me but he will not force his way on us. He's not gonna make it happen, but he invites. He says, come, I wanna be the water to cleanse you. Come, I wanna be the milk to strengthen you. And come, I wanna be the wine that causes your heart to live again. Come, all who are thirsty thirsty. We drink today. You know, one of uh, the most popular stories probably in the entire Bible, and I'll close with this. Jesus tells a parable of two 
of sons. We oftentimes call it the, the prodigal son. The one son goes to his father and says, Dad, I want my inheritance early. I don't want to wait until you die. Give it to me now. And so the dad says, okay, here you go. Gives him the inheritance and he leaves home and squanders everything. Everything. It's gone. Literally, it gets so bad, Jesus tells him the story that he finds himself, this one son, uh, eating with pigs. Like that's a, that's a pretty low spot. And he has this moment where he realizes how far he's fallen and he thinks to himself, well, clearly I've disowned my father. He's not gonna bring me back, but maybe he'll bring me back just to be a servant. And a servant in his household is better than, than laying with pigs. So, so he starts to go home. And he's rehearsing this speech. Dad, I'm not worthy to be your son. I wanna be just a servant. And he's going over it and over it. And it says that in this text that the father, who by the way, represents God in the story, sees the son a long way off. And the father doesn't cross his arms and say, I knew he'd be back. I knew he was gonna squander everything. He wasted my money. That's not what the father does. You know what the father does? He runs to the son, runs to the son. And as they get close, the son starts rehearsing his speech. Dad, I know I'm not worthy. I wanna be one of your servants taking care of the fields. And then all of a sudden the dad, he's not even listening to what the son's saying. He just wraps his arms around him. And he turns and I, I love this, Luke 15, it just says this. The father says, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. So good. But let's not forget about the other son. What's he doing? Well, he, He's out in the field. He's working and, and, and all of a sudden he hears the music and he hears this going on. And, and so the father runs out to the other son and he invites him in as well. He says, come, your brother's home, let's celebrate. And the other son refuses. Interestingly, in this story, two brothers, two invitations and only one gets it. God will not force his way, but he invites. It is interesting, right? It's like there's no record of the father in this story saying, older son, I'm disowning you. You're not my son anymore. That doesn't happen. Both remain sons of the father, but only one gets to experience the father for all that he's worth because one said yes to the invitation of God. Can we stand on up to our feet all across this room? Listen, before we go, um, I don't do this often, but just this morning, early in the morning, I was praying just God, where do you wanna lead us as a church this morning? And uh, really, I, what we're gonna do in a moment from now, and this isn't to guilt anybody, but in a moment, we're gonna open up the altars here as we sing this closing song, Run to the Father. <laughs> so fitting. And listen, I, I need you to know, like there's nothing special about this place. God does not exist here more than he exists where you're at right now. It's not like this is the holy ground and you're just on common ground, that's, that's not it. Um, but in this moment, I think sometimes God honors a step of faith. I think there's something in, in just saying, God, as the dear, pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you. I thirst for you. I desire to be with you. And listen, if that's going on in your heart this morning, then I want to welcome you. I want to invite you to come. 
come down here and nothing spooky is gonna happen. We're gonna sing and we're gonna worship Jesus. But I don't know what you need this morning. My guess is that there's several in this place right now. You need water. You just need water. You feel dirty. Come to the waters. Some of you, you need milk. You've just been running back and forth, the mud, the water, the mud, the water, and, and, and you're just, you're tired of that. You need an appetite change. You want to desire God, come and drink milk. And for some of you right now, that you, you, you just want to experience the wine of God. You want to experience the joy of the Lord. You want to experience like the presence of God in a new way. Come and drink wine. As we sing here today, again, I'm just gonna invite you, come, come all who are thirsty and let's drink from the Lord this morning. Team.